when it comes to public speaking, a little bit of fear is actually quite normal. Even my most experienced speakers will tell me that they sometimes feel some nerves before they go on stage. And these are speakers who you would never guess have any bit of nervousness. The key is that they've learned how to ride these waves of excess energy so that they can speak and look absolutely comfortable on stage. So what we're going to do in this module is we're going to understand fear and what's happening in our nervous system so that we can manage fear with breath, movement and meditation. And we'll go a little bit into the neuroscience, but just enough so that you understand why the breath movement and meditation techniques we'll use are the right techniques for managing these symptoms. But before we go into that, I want to tell you a little bit about befriending fear. And the best way I know how to do that is to tell you about my grandmother. So my grandmother was the sweetest little tiny Irish grandmother you can imagine. Her name was Nellie. We called her Nana and she lived with us when I was growing up. When I was a little kid, six, seven years old, I loved thunderstorms. We grew up in the Midwest, so there were some good ones. And I loved the way the air smelled. I loved to be on the porch during the rain. I loved to go stomping in the puddles after a storm. Nana hated storms and when I was out on the porch or even kind of opening the door to go out she would be very very upset and nervous and oh you're going to get struck by lightning and if she caught me out on the porch she'd send my sister out to tell me because she wouldn't even come out to tell me to come back in and over time what I realized was that her fears about thunderstorms were a little bit outsized for the actual threat no, I wasn't going to go right out in the middle of the storm and get struck by lightning, but I was okay on the porch. And over the years, when I looked at that kind of fondly, I realized there was a separation at some point between the fears that she wanted to put on me and the fears that I accepted. So what I'd like to invite you to do is to think of this fear, this irrational concern that can creep in when you're about to go on stage as that sort of overly concerned family member, grandma, auntie, uncle, friend, and name it. So mine was Nervous Nellie, and it, for all her other good qualities, Nana's Nervous Nellie qualities crept in here and there. You might think of this compassionately and with kindness, but with firmness and separating yourself. So it might go something like this. You're getting ready to go on stage. It's maybe 30 minutes before your presentation. And suddenly you're feeling like your heart is going a little faster or your hands feel sweaty or your breath is a little shallow. And this is the time to kind of name it and claim it, but with compassion and say, ah, here she comes, nervous Nelly. And greet this presence as a friend. Ah, Nelly, here you are right on time showing up to tell me how scared I should be and how unsafe this situation should be. But guess what, Nellie? I've got this. I'm prepared, I'm excited, and I'm gonna do this. So what I invite you to do, sweet Nellie, is to go into the back row, or better yet, wait for me outside this auditorium because I'm about to give a really strong presentation. And afterward, I'll come and get you and we'll celebrate how well I've done. So greeting this fear almost as a friend because it is somebody it is a presence it is a voice that's trying to look out for you separating yourself from its concerns and knowing that those concerns are not rational or helpful letting it know this is not what you need right now and taking control of the situation and i invite you to try this before you go into a meeting anytime you start feeling a little oh i'm going to get struck by lightning imagine that this benevolent presence is just something that you need to acknowledge, thank, and dismiss for now so that you can defuse these feelings and get on with what you need to do.